Welcome back traders. I'm Brian Horton with BK Trading Academy, professional investor, trader, and educator. And we're going to be talking about stocks. So if you're a brand new trader, or if this is your first time even trading stocks, this will be the right video for you. If you've been following us for a while, you know that we pretty much talk about Forex. We've been getting a lot of questions about stocks. And so I want to go ahead and address how to actually get started and what are some things to look for. Now, before we go ahead and do that, I need you to do me a favor, hit that like button below, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you hit that notification bell because that encourages me to make more videos like this. It lets me know that you appreciate it and that you're learning the content that we're presenting for you. So the very first thing that you want to do before you trade a stock is to find the right broker, right? So a broker account is an account like any other account, like a checking or a savings account, except you can actually trade from it. So you have money in this account. And when the market moves up or down, if you buy or sell, you make money. Same in reverse. If you lose money, that money will subtract from that account. So I'm going to give you some tips to identify great brokers. Number one. Do they charge commission? Oftentimes when trading stocks, you can find brokers that do not charge commission. Thanks to Robin Hood, they led the way. So for me, my job is to make money. I wanna make sure I make as much money as possible. So if they don't charge commission, that's a plus for me. If you don't mind them charging commission, that's completely up to you, but you wanna make sure that the pros outweighs the cons. Number two, does that broker require you to deposit a minimum deposit, right? It's completely fine. You wanna make sure that that minimum deposit is good for you if that's the case. Number three, and this is really important, for me ease of platform when you're executing trades you want to make sure that you can navigate with that platform very very easily you want to make sure that you know where your buy limit is where you can mark up charts and your trend lines and your indicators you want to know that where everything is and make sure that it's not hidden from you that it's not difficult because when you're executing trades you want to make sure that that's all available for you i've talked about some of this stuff in the very first video so if you want to learn more about that First, check out that very first video. But if you don't want to disrupt this video, I'll go ahead and link it at the end of this video as well. Number four, execution speed. This is highly important as well. When you are entering a trade and you're hitting buy, you want to make sure that execution speed is on point. You don't want your money to be played with, right? So as soon as you hit that buy, you want to make sure you're in the market. There's oftentimes that brokers will have some sort of lag. You want to make sure it's a reputable broker as well. And then number five, you want to make sure that you have proper support. I personally want 24 seven support. Now, although the market isn't open 24 seven, they're open five days a week. You want to make sure that that support is there for you 24 seven. Sometimes you can trade outside of market hours. And if you have a question, you want to make sure that customer service is right there for you, whether if it's a phone number, an email, and make sure that they can get back to you as soon as possible. Customer service is number one when it comes to selecting a broker to me in my opinion all right guys so now we're going to be talking about selecting stocks now this is very very important now everyone knows the huge companies like apple microsoft costco and other companies like that but if you're a brand new trader you can trade something called etfs etf stands for exchange traded funds and this allows you to trade multiple stocks all in one so imagine multiple stocks in one bucket or one box and you can actually trade it as one so if you don't want to just stick with apple for example so let's say you like some tech companies you also like some food companies you can actually trade an etf and combine them all into one so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about some of those etf so a lot of you guys may have heard of the dow jones the dow jones consists of 30 companies 30 top companies in the united states and you can actually trade all of those companies in one so the reason why you may want to do that is because they're the top companies right and so they move pretty well the dow jones is very very volatile and so it allows you to uh select th those 30 companies and trade it in one direction and oftentimes other stocks are led by that company such as the s p and we'll talk a little bit about that so let me show you exactly what the dow jones consists of all right so i'm pulling this side up from cnbc.com slash dow 30 up here at the top left and so these are the companies at in the dow jones the top 30 companies so the very first one you'll see is american express you'll see amgen apple boeing caterpillar you see chevron a lot of these jp morgan chase mcdonald's microsoft 
So these are some major stocks, major companies in the United States that typically continues to climb. So if you were a long-term trader and you wanted to trade for years and years, you want to ultimately buy low whenever price takes a dip, such as like the COVID-19 situation where all of the stocks had dropped. Now, before start to pick back up, that would have been a good opportunity to actually buy because it just continued to rise since then. Those are major companies that the United States pretty much rely on. So you can actually trade all 30 of these companies into one, and I'll show you that ticker symbol for that. And the ticker symbol for that is DIA. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you on TradingView. A lot of you who follow us understand TradingView. So this is DIA and this consists of the Dow Jones and all of those 30 companies comprised into one. So I'm gonna actually paper trade with you guys and show you a little bit how this works and navigate with TradingView. Uh, unfortunately, TradingView only have a few selected brokers that you can choose. You can't really use Robinhood or your Weeble or anything like that. These are the brokers that you can actually use with TradingView right here, which is Oanda, very popular, Forex.com, uh, FXCM, and so on and so forth. If you want to list these brokers, all you have to do is Google TradingView list of brokers. It'll provide it for you. Or you can just go to TradingView.com, click more, and then go ahead and search brokers, and then you'll find it from that point as well. Another ETF that you can actually trade is the NASDAQ. Now, the NASDAQ consists of the top 100 companies in the United States pretty much dealing with technology companies. So if you love Apple and then you also love Microsoft and then other technologies, instead of trading them separately, you can combine them into this one bucket and trade it as one because you're a technology person. So it depends on what type of person you are, what type of stocks that you like, uh, and you can actually combine them into one. And let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. All right, so I'm back here at CNBC.com, and all I have to do is go ahead and click NASDAQ 100. Like I said, it's the top 100 technology companies in the United States, and it provides it for you right here. Adobe, you have even Airbnb, Amazon, uh, American Electric Power Company, and so on and so forth. You can go ahead and look through this on your own as well. So again, like I said, the website is CNBC.com slash NASDAQ 100. But if you're on that site from then, all, all you have to do is toggle in between this area here. So now I'm at the Dow 30 and now I'm at the NASDAQ. So the ticker symbol for this, if you want to trade all of these technologies company or one of the populars that you can actually do is QQQ. So for example, what I would do is click here and I would just go ahead and type QQQ and right here. So now I'm trading the NASDAQ 100 all wrapped into one. So like I said, this is something that you can actually try if you're a beginning trader or even an advanced trader so that you don't, you're not subject to only trading one company. All right, guys, now finally, the S&P 500. Now the S&P 500 is the top 500 US companies that you can actually trade together. So like I said, instead of trading just one company like Chipotle, you can trade all 500 top companies and so guys i am trading the s p 500 remember i'm trading all 500 companies this is my chart here i have my order screen up here if you're familiar with trading view as you should if you've been following us for a while you will see on the right side here you'll see this down arrow and this up arrow that's going to be your order panel so if you go ahead and click it this will pop up and now you can place market trades limit trades and stop trades. so we have multiple videos showing you about that but i'm going to go ahead and choose market execution for that that means it will let me in the trade right away okay one thing that you want to note if i want to buy it will cost me 362 dollars and some change you can see that price is moving right here it's following this candle so it will cost me 363 dollars to buy all of the s p 500 into one per share and you can see that I have five right here. So if I did five shares, it'll cost me $1,815, right? So if I change it to one, it will adjust for to $362 a share. So that's what you wanna take note of. I'm gonna just do five for the purposes of this video, right? So now I'm gonna be trading this. You wanna make sure that you have that in your account to trade, first of all, okay? And then if I was doing a limit order, I would put all of this information in. I would do take profit. I want to take profit at 75 points or 75 ticks. We use the word pips in Forex, right? Uh, or I can put a certain price in which I want to get out. Uh, it will do it automatically as well. And then I can go ahead and do the dollar amount. So if I want to get out at this amount, it will do that as well. 
And then for stop loss, I can do the same thing. If I wanna do 25 ticks below and get me out, it will get me out as well. It will update the dollar amount and the dollar amount that I would lose and so on and so forth. So I'm not gonna teach you exactly how to use this platform in this particular video, but I'm just kind of giving you points so that you can understand how to trade stocks. Ultimately, a lot of this is pretty much the same with 4X. And that's the point that I wanna get across as far as the limit orders, the stop orders, the market execution. But for purposes of this video, let's go ahead and do market execution because I wanna get in right away. And I'm going to be trading five of these shares for 18, 15, and some change, right? So as soon as I go ahead and hit buy, you will see it right here. So I'm up 30 cents, I'm minus 10 cents. So as price moves, this will move as well. If I hover it, if I want, I can add a stop loss by clicking this or take profit by clicking this. Um, and then I can even reverse my position by clicking this as well. So it's pretty cool. Um, you can also even adjust your settings. So I don't want to go too much into trading view because you can use Webull, you can use Robinhood, you can use uh, TradeStation. There's a lot of different brokers that you can actually use as long as it fits your personality. Now, I used to work at Bank of America and Bank of America is a part of Merrill Lynch and Merrill Edge. Merrill Lynch, if you go inside of Bank of America and you are a customer with Bank of America, you can speak with a Merrill Lynch representative and say, hey, I want to trade. Can you set me up with your platform and they'll go ahead and do that which leads me to the final thing in regards to opening a cash account or a margin account account now when you open your broker account they will ask you if you want a cash account or a margin account now they both have its pros and cons if you open in a cash account they have a minimum deposit requirement so it could be two thousand dollars five thousand or whatever if you're trading that that's all you can trade so if you lose that you lose that that's all the buying power that you have if you have a margin account, then you can actually use leverage from that broker. And oftentimes it will help you with the buying power. So for example, with Merrill Lynch, they give you two times the leverage as of today that I know of. It could have changed depending on when you're watching this video, but they give you two times the leverage power. So if you have $5,000 in your account, they will actually double that. Now with Webull, they will give you four times the leverage power. So if you have $5,000 in your account, you just multiply that with four and they will give you $20,000 of buying power. So if you don't know exactly what I'm talking about in regards to leverage, remember, check out that first video that I posted because I'm going to start posting some stocks because you guys are interested. So check out that very first video. I'm going to post it here again so you can go ahead and click it. If you don't want to disrupt this video, wait to the end as well, and we'll go ahead and drop that in as well. But you really want to understand the difference between the margin and the cash account because it has its advantages and there's some things you can do and can't do. So for example, with the margin account, you're subject to the PDT rule. The PDT rule means that you can only trade up to three times within a five day period, right? So if you have multiple trades and multiple stocks that you're interested in and you say, this is a good opportunity, but you're after your third order, you can't get in. You have to wait five days after. So there's a lot of different things that I talked about in that very first video as well. So you want to make sure you go back to that and watch it as well. So guys, if you're interested and want me to talk a little bit more about stocks, drop it in the comments because that lets me know that you're interested in that and I can continue to post it. We know that a lot of you who follow us trade for X and oftentimes people want to transition but it's like transitioning into a whole different field, right? There are a lot of things that are similar and there are a lot of things that are not similar. And I wanna make sure that I have your back to do that. So make sure to comment and let me know that I'm doing the right thing. Show me some love and also subscribe if you haven't already. I'll make more of these if you're interested. If you are a new and struggling trader and you're interested in Forex and you need your handheld, I really encourage you to sign up with BK Trading Academy. The link is in the description below. We actually hold your hand. There's no more monthly memberships. There's only a one-time price and you have access to over 70 plus videos that breaks down every single thing, whether if you're a new trader and have no clue what a candlestick is, to advanced trader where we show you advanced strategy. And you'll also have access to a private community where you can actually message us real time. We're involved in there heavily. We trade three times a week where you can take the same trades that we do and you can see why and how we execute it. Guys, I will see you in the next video. I appreciate your time. You guys have a blessed day.